Hey Bears, Eric here, and get your popcorn popping. Kathleen Kennedy said some more stuff, and a bunch of bigots are mad. So the Acolyte is right around the corner, and already the Star Wars astroturfing has begun. We have some statements here from Kathleen Kennedy. We have a couple more statements we're going to look at, but ultimately the same bobblehead bigots, the same clout goblins, clout trolls, the same people out there who have been astroturfing Star Wars for years now, saying that it's dead, it's dead, it's dead, are still talking about it and still upset about statements that are made that aren't necessarily about them. And they're running to the defense. They're picking up the groceries. They're on the backs of all the people who are uh, being awful to these actors and directors. And they act like they're not the same ones. And they pretend like they're not part of it. So why are you saying you're not these things, but then you're running to the defense of people who do and say these things? It's kind of sus. Let's look at the statements and let's look at their really bad takes. So here's a statement from Kathleen Kennedy. It says, I think a lot of the women who step into Star Wars struggle with the toxic fandom attacks a bit more because the fan base being so male dominated, they sometimes get attacked in ways that can be quite personal. Operating within these giant franchises now with social media and the level ex expectation, it's terrifying. And the comments under this tweet sort of reinforce exactly what she's saying, because people who are in these spaces that want to argue about this stuff, they, they tend to take away and extrapolate only the information that processes in their mind. So they overlook all of the other relevant points that are being made here. So let's break this down a little bit. I think a lot of women who step into Star Wars struggle with the toxic fandom attacks a bit more. Now, you could say, oh, they're not toxic attacks. But if you've been paying attention for the last few years and you look at the titles and thumbnails of videos specifically about women in Star Wars, you will know that they are held at a different standard than men. And then that feeds into the second part of this quote here. It says, because the fan base being so male-dominated, they sometimes get attacked in ways that can be quite personal. Uh, operating within these giant franchises now with social media and the level of expectation, it's terrifying. And what she means by those statements is that things that are said about the women in Star Wars are not said about the men in Star Wars because it's specifically about them being women. That is the context within that statement. And the size of the internet, the size of social media makes it extremely difficult for an actor in the industry today to get away from pressure when it comes to toxicity within fandoms. Not necessarily just a toxic fandom, but toxicity within the fandoms. And that is exactly what she's speaking to here. Let's take a look at some of the replies to this, uh, to Kathleen's statements. Oh, some classic deflection here. I mean, they love the actor who played Princess Leia. Yeah, back in the day when social media wasn't a factor, which was part of the context of the statement that she was making. By the way, there are also people who were mad at Princess Leia in the more recent films and went on to criticize her and talk shit about her. They're thereby proving her point that it did not happen prior to the social media stuff the same way it happens now. Proving the point, again, just... This is probably one of my favorites because it's Nerd Roddick just sharing the title of this article and says, Begun, the Disney Star Wars marketing has. Obviously, mimicking Yoda. Don't have to tell you guys that. Uh, but Nerd Roddick is one of the people who has done a lot of work in the space um, making it hard for women in Star Wars. He's he's kind of the at the top of that list, which is why his channel is so popular because the toxicity within the within the fandom sort of flocks to him um, as the sort of patriarch of of this whole anti woman movement in Star Wars. So it's no big shock that he's on the front lines again for this. And this isn't the only statement made about acolyte that they're kind of latching onto. Let's take a look at another one. Here's something from Leslie Hedlund, and this kind of echoes sort of the sentiments from the whole Riva incident and even other incidents outside of that, where uh, they say, as a fan myself, I know how frustrating some Star Wars storytelling in the past has been. I stand by my empathy for Star Wars fans. But I want to be clear, anyone who engages in bigotry, racism, or hate speech, I don't consider a fan. So she does not consider them a fan. So let's again look into the deeper meaning behind this statement. So stating that she's a fan herself means that she's already in the fandom. Okay, box checked, because that's one of the big arguments we have is that these people making Star Wars aren't fans, right? That's the argument that we're all supposed to be making, that we want fans making this, this content. She's a fan, okay? States here. She has empathy for Star Wars fans, meaning all Star Wars fans. But I want to be clear, anyone who engages in bigotry, racism, or hate speech, I don't consider a fan. So that statement alone should tell you, hey, She's singling out certain things that happen. Bigotry, racism, and hate speech. Does not consider those fans of Star Wars. 
So if you are not someone doing those things specifically, she is not talking about you. So you can look at that and go, yeah, those things are bad. I agree. And then move on with your day. Okay. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be going to bat for bigotry, racism, and hate speech. But just like it is with any of this stuff, when a woman or somebody talking about diversity or inclusivity or whatever speaks out against any of the struggles that they see on social media that we all know is happening, we know it's happening. Even the people who would defend this stuff know it's happening. It's always like, well, it's not happening at a big level, but it is happening. So for them, that's okay. One or two bigoted harassment campaigns isn't a big deal. So it's always about how much it actually is. What's the, what is the amount that's happening for them, uh, but they acknowledge it is happening, saying that those people are not considered fans because of what they're doing to the actors, directors, writers, whatever, should be something we can all stand behind because it's a very specific thing that she is saying there. There's no ambiguity to that. There's no generalization. There's no sort of like, you have to guess who she's talking about. It's very specific on who she's talking about. So let's take a look at some of the responses to this and see how many people are going to bat for bigots, racists, and hate speech. Uh, Yugi here says, does saying I hate Star Wars count as hate speech? No, that would not count as hate speech. It also means you're not a fan. So you're not included in that conversation at all. CM goes, but when the fans criticize the stories, what are we called? Well, if you're saying racist, bigoted, hate speech stuff, you're going to be called a racist, a bigot, or saying hate speech. Uh, you're not criticizing the story if that's the thing you're doing, which if there's a cognitive dissonance in your mind somewhere, maybe you're misunderstanding that, or maybe you know you're doing it and you just don't want to be called those things. Luke says, hasn't even released and they're already doing damage control. Doesn't bode well. well that's because there's people already saying this stuff. Luke, keep up. Keep up. It's the internet. I know it's tough. But if you're such a huge fan of Star Wars, you would know and you would see these things happening because they're very obvious. They're very they're out there everywhere. Comic Book Bob says, translation, if you criticize anything I do, it's bigotry, racism, or hate speech. See, that's absurdity. When you, when you go to these absurd places, it means you don't have an argument um, because that's not what the person is saying. They made it very clear on what they were talking about. And when you use an absurd uh, comparison to that, that means that you realize and you recognize that this person is saying something that is true and you do not have an argument. Chad here goes, it's easy to call people who ridicule the show racist and bigots so you can write them off. Well, I mean, if they're saying that stuff, yeah, they can be written off, which is exactly what she said. We're already seeing it happen on YouTube. Here's a clip from Side Scrollers that's titled, If You Don't Like Star Wars, You're a Bigot, which is not what the statement said. However, there's a bunch of people in this space that are waiting for them to echo their feelings. And their feelings are, I want to say racist, bigoted stuff. I want to be able to say that and still engage with the fandom because they don't like being held accountable for doing all this stuff. They read her statement and they immediately identified with racist, bigoted hate speech. They immediately identified with that. More like they rushed to make a video so they could be mad because they know they're doing that stuff and they don't want to be held accountable. They don't want to be called out for it. So instead they're like, oh, if you, if you don't like Star Wars, you're a bigot, which is not the quote. And of course, our favorite Dumbo on YouTube here, uh, Melanie Mack says, Star Wars, the acolyte blames failures on men. There's always a way of framing this. It's almost like they put these things into chat GBT or one of these title generators and goes with the one that seems the most inflammatory. That was not the statement that was made by Kathleen Kennedy. They were very specific about the people they were talking about. You don't like when things are generalized when they don't speak to your narrative, and then you use generalizations when they do speak to your narrative. This is part of the course for this entire pocket corner of toxic fandom. And the people who are defending this that are acting like they are not those things, if you're not those things, you don't have to defend it. It's that simple. Only a hit dog hollers.